have to use the internet really because that's I mean right now that's like obviously like our world you know the internet just took over our lives anyway hello hello Yola and thank you for being here uh, I invited my friend Yola today and I met her in Brighton but uh, she is Polish and uh, she speaks English very well and uh, I want to talk uh, with her about uh, English language. Okay, so how are you? Hi Maria, well thank you for having me, this is really cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very well. I'm quite excited to speak about the English language, that's like a topic that's far away from my reality somehow, <laughs> like in my work, you know, so yeah. that's really cool, to, like a different thing to talk about. Yeah, Yola is an amazing uh, illustrator <laughs> and she works with uh, watercolor and she's very good. <laughs> okay. But uh, I believe you like languages as well. That's why I invited you. So, well, first question. Uh, can you describe English with uh, one word? Oh, God. Uh, that's, that's quite tricky, actually. I was thinking about that. Um, but it's difficult to pinpoint one word. But I think I'm going to have to go with, like, easygoing. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that English is quite easygoing. It's quite natural for me to just like have a little chat with someone without like many strings attached so it's like quite easy to just like have a small talk oh, yeah. um so I, it's quite easy going also perhaps because i've listened to a lot of music and i watch movies so every like types of conversations that you can encounter they're like either serious or you know fun but it, like, the language is very flexible in that sense mm -hmm. so i'm easy going Okay, yeah. uh, it's interesting because uh, my friend Malvina, who is Polish, told me the same. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you can see a big difference between uh, uh, Polish and English uh, in this term. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Polish is definitely quite a complicated language. There's a lot of rules. There's quite strict rules as well, which you have to remember in order to speak well. So sometimes it's very easy for even for Polish people to make a mistake, just like in terms of grammar uh, okay. and so writing. Yeah. Um, but also English is, I think, is quite, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of words which are quite simple, you know, like a lot of people just say things like oh this is nice this is cool this is awesome so these words are very you know bland but at the same time they, they say a lot you know so you can express a lot of things with like a vague word but it just really works well for conversations whereas I think maybe in Polish you have to be a bit more specific what you're talking about I think if you just said oh yeah that's nice it's like people would be like but what do you mean exactly like can you describe it a bit more you know in more detail yeah, yeah. but in English you just be like yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, it's like it's just easy going. You know, it's like you can express a lot of things with just like one word. So okay, yes. yeah, I think. Yeah, and maybe you you can use also short sentences. Yeah, I think you can you can describe things in less detail. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can be more yeah vague. Okay, but I think maybe it goes for other languages too. Like more European languages are very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, very like you have precise in what you're trying to explain but in English is kind of like I don't know you have room to just be like kind of vague I kind of yeah. like that yeah it's nice. okay okay nice and uh, okay when uh, did you start uh, to learn English uh, well actually for me it was when I was really young because I was um, in Canada with my family when I was like three years old and that was because we got lucky my, my dad was working there so we moved there for a year but I was very shy and very young, <laughs> so I didn't really want to speak to anyone. And I made friends, but it was mostly like sign language. But at the same time, I think, you know, it just hearing it definitely helped, like, you know, further down the line. Yeah. But then in school, I think maybe I was, I don't know, it's probably in primary school. It must have been when I was like seven. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. But it was quite intense, like in school in Poland, you have English like every year and like maybe five hours a week. So it's like you know almost every, almost every day yeah so once you moved to england you already knew english or uh... I did, and i was fairly good i think mm. but it's completely different because you know reality like clashes with your classroom yeah of course stuff. i mean uh, it's different to talk english in a class or in real life absolutely yeah. so it's like i think you need both but you know it's, it's funny like you, you feel like you know a language and then you come 
and you're like, I no, I don't think I can speak this language. That's like, okay. it's just too quick. You know, you can't really grasp it yeah. at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was, uh, um, I imagine that you studied grammar in school, English grammar. Mm. Was it, um, did you find it useful afterwards in order to, to speak English? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, w I, I came to the UK to study, mm -hmm. so it definitely helped for me in terms of studying because I would write essays and, you know, I would oh, have yeah. to write documents and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I, I think I had some colleagues who didn't really study English or at least in that capacity before they came to uni and they struggled with that grammar part of like writing, you know, yeah. so that definitely helped me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and speaking, yeah, I'm sure. I think it just, it's just difficult to say, really, because you don't know. I mean, like, what you know is just yours, so, like, you don't know any different. Yeah. So, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm sure it helped a lot. It's just, then it was just molded by, you know, by actually being here. So, then it just transformed. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure it was, like, huge, because I think if I didn't have it, then I would be completely clueless. So, yeah. Yeah. So, now... Um... Well, I think uh, uh, you lived uh, in England uh, for many years now. Uh, in the UK, yeah, I uh, went yeah. to Scotland first. Ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, when did you start to feel uh, fluent in English? Oh, that's, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a process. Yeah. I think I was probably quite fluent when I first arrived as well but I probably lacked some like you know kind of casual conversation skills so I probably had the vocabulary but I was probably quite slow to use it I, I can't quite remember mm -hmm. I never really had huge issues but like you know there was like an international group as well so it was a lot of foreigners at uni so it's also a little bit different I think maybe if you move somewhere where it's just local people that's probably like completely you know a shock to the system which I had too when I was interacting with Scottish people, <laughs> because there was, it was just like, I, yeah, I don't know, it sounds like a language, it doesn't sound like English, you know, so, but yeah, there was a lot of international people, so I think also having the confidence of like the, your peers being on a similar page, I kind of felt comfortable, but it definitely grows, I mean, the more you live somewhere, the more you just like start being a bit more, you know, casual about it, more daily life talks, and then you just kind of pick up different things every day, you know, even now you just like you meet new people they say a word and you're like oh maybe i'll use that word too i don't know mm -hmm. so it's just like it's it just falls yeah. constantly so uh, do you still feel uh, you can improve in english uh yeah absolutely i think any everyone can and this is the funny thing i don't mean to like <laughs> be like uh what's the word um <laughs> like no, it's not like criticism but i noticed that a lot of native British people, for example, or probably goes the same with North Americans. The language is quite simple, like the language that you use every day. It's like, as I said, you know, you would describe something as nice or pretty or, you know, it's like quite simple words which are, which most people understand, um, which makes it great. But at the same time, you know, English is so full of amazing words that are kind of obscure and they are maybe not used anymore. Yeah. So I think if you focus, like I would like to read more literature, but like classic literature. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, reading, you know, reading something like Shakespeare is like impossible. I don't understand it. So it's like it seems like English is like so layered, but then we only use like the top layer. I see. But I think yeah, anyone could could improve that. I think because in daily life you just don't use really those you know this wealth of the language that you could be using. So mm -mm -mm. yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm very curious about uh, your experience uh, because. Uh, uh, for me, um, when uh, I arrived uh, to the UK, um, my English was very, very poor and especially I was worried uh, about my pronunciation. Uh, mm. Did you feel the same? Um, yeah, I would say so. I mean, certain words are like a little bit strange. Like you, you kind of have to remember what a certain, how to pronounce a certain word in order to pronounce it right. So you think it should be pronounced one way, but then it's actually completely different. So you have to learn, like, memorize certain words. Yeah. Um, but even now, even now, like, sometimes I have a problem, to, like, pronouncing something correctly. So people, like, correct me, which I actually love it, because I have no clue. But, you know, there is, there is this difference between being hangover, if you, you know, if you're drunk, and then you're hangover, and, and also hangover. I don't, 
I don't know. I was I uh, yeah. was trying to explain this to me the other day and they were saying that you know it's hangover and hangover and I was like that's exactly the same. Like I don't understand. I don't hear the difference. Yeah. And so basically one of them is separated and the other one is together. I think it's got to do with the first uh, the first part of the word. So hang is in like H A and N G. So like ah, present tense. Yeah. The other one would be in the past, so it would say U instead of A, I think. But I still didn't quite grasp the difference of how it's meant to sound, so I was just like... Okay, yeah. I don't know, I'll just keep saying what I'm saying, because I literally... I see. And what's the difference in meaning? I think it's meant to be that you feel hangover or you are hangover. I don't know. I see. Okay, okay. It's really confusing to me, so I was just like... Thank you, but I don't know, I'll just move on because <laughs> my brain is just like not doing it. I didn't know that, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Um, um, well, after uh, living in the UK for so long, um, did you pick up some English uh, habit? Um... Well, probably small talk. Mm -hmm. I, it's not like I really like small talk. I don't think I'm very good at it. <laughs> Some days. It depends on the day. It depends on the person as well. But yeah, definitely. I quite like that small talk, actually. This may be the difference when I go back home and like the small talk doesn't really exist. Or I mean, you can do small talk, but it's much more specific. Like people in shops wouldn't necessarily just like chat up about like, how are you doing? <laughs> people just don't really do that. Um, so yeah, I would say that. Um, but then also just like little words that you can pick up from certain people. Maybe you meet someone new and they use a word a lot and you never really use that word, but now you just start saying it because you hear it a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. But that comes and goes as well. That's interesting because like maybe you'll meet someone and they use that word and then you use it too, but then you stop seeing them or, you know, something happens and then you stop using the word. So I think it's like it comes and goes, you know, so people just bring you words as well. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, and uh, you're right, uh, because um, uh, I've been studying that um, small talking uh, is typical uh, of English language. Uh, it's not uh, found in all the languages. And uh, mm. yeah, and yeah, just to explain to everybody, it's used to... Um, Okay, uh, I understood that small talk is used when uh, you don't want to keep silent and you want to say something, but it's something general, right? Like uh, yeah, it's not specific. You don't. It's not meant to like you know. You're not really, you're not really meant to make friends in that moment. It's just yeah. There's two, there's two humans or more, and then you just have to make a bit of conversation to you know break the ice maybe as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of the times people think it's negative or maybe foreigners think it's negative but I kind of started seeing it as more positive because then, you know, you don't always have to have a very deep connection with someone. You can just meet them and have a little exchange. Yeah. But still, it still like gives you something, right? I don't know, it's just their energy, you kind of, you can read people. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's, I've, I started seeing it as like a nice thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just like just having a casual conversation without much detail. Yeah. That's, that's great, yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, okay, mm -hmm. uh, is there some aspect of uh, the English language which you particularly like? Uh, well, apart uh, from uh, small talk and that you already said. Um, I like quite common it is. I mean, you know, it's most of the world speaks it. And I think that's why I like it so much. Because I'm kind of like, I want to know what's happening. <laughs> so like, I enjoy being in the loop, basically. But I like that a lot of music is written in English so I can understand what they're saying. Yeah. I like what films, um, which are in English. Um, yeah, and reading, I don't know, I think it's just like the, the omnipresence of the language is like really nice to me because, well, nice, there we go. <laughs> really nice. Because, um, yeah, because you can know what's happening and, you know, like, I mean, yeah, America is all English, you know, it's like the the most powerful country, let's say, you know, in the world, but like at least you kind of get the idea of what's happening, you know. <laughs> so I feel like that's probably the nicest thing. And nicest thing. Why am I saying I'm like it's so vague? <laughs> the most valuable thing. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I think 
being just being like in the loop basically of everything mm -hmm. yeah 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 i understand and um, yeah i like it um, as well you can uh, you can read about everything uh, and yeah and uh, okay i think uh, we arrived to the last question uh, what piece of advice would you like to give to students uh, who are learning english do you mean, do you mean people who are learning in school mm -hmm. maybe like anybody like who are learning english in school or maybe they move to the uk to learn english and they're still at the beginning okay um I think you have to use the internet really because that's, I mean, right now that's like obviously like our world, you know, the internet just took over our lives anyway, but I think you can really use it to your advantage and especially when you go to like YouTube, you know, I mean, I don't know how, how much of the content on YouTube is in English, but I can imagine it's like really high. It's probably like 80% at least or something, I don't know. Um, so you can watch like random videos about any topic that interests you just to kind of get a bit of... Uh, get some new words in or try to see what people behave like you know just watch them speak as well yeah. facial expressions so youtube is a great thing because it's real people mm -hmm. you know people make yeah. content so That's it's not true. like movies by the same time movies are great too because you can do the same thing just watch them on the screen see them how they talk um listen to music that's what i do i used to do because mm -hmm. i just like lyrics when i was young i would always like to listen to a song but also read the lyrics oh, okay you know yeah so like music really helped me. Um, I mean, reading, I mean reading, of course, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Let's not forget reading. But I think with reading, it's a little bit more difficult because then you just, you only have the words, so you have to then maybe get a dictionary or something. I think with videos, it's just a little bit easier because you see the person, so yeah, you, you understand the emotion as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So yeah, you can definitely use that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, yeah, you can find a um, lot of things on the internet and it's a really powerful tool. And uh, yeah, it's exactly as you said, you can hear the pronunciation, also pronunciation from different parts of the world. You can hear American accent, uh, English accent, uh, uh, Northern accent and Southern accent, which are really different. So um, yeah, and also the also radio the maybe. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's true. Because, uh, for example, I, I met uh, a guy who learned English by listening to BBC Radio. And uh, oh, really? he told me that uh, it's very good because, uh, on the contrary, uh, they don't have a strong accent on the BBC. So you can uh, mm. uh, learn the more uh, neutral accent, which is good as well. Mm. Oh, that's true. That's a good point, yeah. actually. I never thought about it. But that's, but that's true. You know, my dad does that. I mean, not for, not for sake of like necessarily learning English, because he knows English quite well. But when we used to live in Canada, when I was a child, mm -hmm. he was like, listening to the Canadian radio, like from a specific location during that time. And literally ever since then, so it's been like 30 years almost, he still listens to it oh, almost every okay. day. Just like, yeah. just, like, just like makes his coffee in the morning and like <laughs> see Canada, Canada something and he loves it. Like, you know, you know, he doesn't need to listen to about Canadian local news, but he likes the accent, he likes the atmosphere, you know, it's like, it gives you like a view of the place, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you, Yola. And, uh, well, uh, if you like uh, the video, and you can uh, put like and subscribe to my channel and um, see you next time. And thank you again, Yola. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care.